The question we get asked the most is money. How much did flying Coney cost? What do we pay for berthing? How much did we pay in the shipyard? And does a refit like ours cost millions? So two years ago, we bought this 25 meter long, 73 year old trawler. Luckily, we didn't know what was coming, but more about that later. 25 meter ship, fully operational and a well working engine. That must be very expensive. So without further ado, I tell you what we've paid. We've paid 65,000 euros for Flying Coney. And for my American friends, that's about the same in dollars. But was it a good deal? At least in theory. Well, let's put it into perspective. Flying Coney is a steel ship and the value of a steel ship is never zero. There is always the scrap value and usually operational steel boats of that size cost somewhere between 60 to 120,000 euros. So operational. It means that all the necessary technical equipment like engine, steering hydraulic, navigation electronics and mandatory safety equipment is aboard and working. And also that the paperwork is correct. Speaking about paperwork, for a ship above 20 meters you need a safety report and without it you're not allowed to move the boat under own power. That means if you have to move the boat, for example if you have to go to the shipyard or you want to change harbor, you need a professional and licensed towing company to bring you there, which costs thousands of euros. You might think it can't be that difficult to get the safety report. Well, the problem is that if you haven't applied for it before 2018, it is basically impossible to get it for an old boat. So Flying Coney had a valid safety report with a good looking hull sickness report, an efficient engine with not many hours, a transit, a dinghy with a brand new outboard and all the mandatory safety equipment. So in my opinion, it was a reasonable decision to buy this boat. But enough of justifying the worst decision in my life, let's get on with the costs. Purchasing price is one thing, insurance and additional costs are another. By far the most expensive is the insurance. It consists of the liability insurance and the all risk insurance. But then there is also ship registration fees, notary costs and radio registration fees. So a total of 3708 euros. So after we spent 68,708 euros to own Flying Coney, we now have the big problem to find a purse. Luckily the harbor next door had a place for us and we pay about 355 euros per month. However, that's a jetty without electricity and without water supply. And it's also a space where probably no one else can moor. So it's probably cheaper than you've thought but we have to carefully select the harbor and prices vary quite a bit. There is another option and that's because Flying Coney is an historic boat and is part of the fishing and boat building heritage. So we have access to museum harbors. And they are significantly cheaper than normal marinas and are there to make it possible to keep these old boats alive. However, it's getting more complicated when traveling because in general daily rates are much higher. Sometimes a day in a marina for a 25 meter boat costs up to 600 euros. For example in the marina split in Croatia. So we have to plan in advance and carefully select the harbors while on the way. On the other hand our vision is to sail with up to 12 guests and to teach traditional sailing skills. So 600 divided by 12 is 50 bucks per person. And it's still very expensive. So I guess no split for us. However, since we already talk about traveling, we best continue with fuel costs. I've already mentioned that we have a very efficient engine. And we're using up to 12 liters an hour at cruising speed. So that's half a gallon per mile or one liter per kilometer. Still a lot in car terms, but very reasonable in ship terms. Especially older engines can use up to 40 liters per hour. But overall the costs for fuel are really not that important. First of all, we are not traveling that much and second, you have the maintenance costs for the engine like oil and filters. And at the moment the engine maintenance is more expensive than our fuel costs. 
So in my opinion, when you pay all this money for boat, bursting, maintenance and haulouts, you better spend that little bit extra for fuel to enjoy the nice side of boating. And we also have a big plan to save on fuel costs in the future. And that is adding a sailing rig. However, last year our only journey was to the shipyard in Urk. And that's when you start to understand the saying, boat, bring out another thousand. So our initial plan was to haul out the vessel, put on new anodes and anti-fouling, and back into the water again. So just regular boat maintenance, which is advised every other year. This regular maintenance, including haul out, pressure wash, primer, potent paint, anodes and labor is about 5000 euro. But since you only need to do it every other year, it is about 2500 euros annually. That means only if you don't find anything unexpected. For example, an electrolysis damage. Remember when I told you we didn't know what was coming? So that was the point when things started to escalate a bit. To make it short, we found a huge corrosion damage that was so severe that it wasn't sure if we could save the vessel. In hundreds of work intensive hours, together with the lads from the shipyard and the surveyor, we managed to repair everything. This enormous challenge is well documented in dozens of videos here on YouTube and I highly recommend you subscribe to this channel to follow along on this adventurous journey. So for three additional months on the hard, with a lot of unexpected surprises, we paid 15,000 euros extra for the shipyard and all the great work that had been carried out. On top of it, we spent an extra 5,000 euros for our own equipment, the top coat and consumables. So in total, we spent 25,000 euros for the shipyard time, including the maintenance and the repairs. So most people who know the price levels in ship maintenance usually don't believe us these numbers. Because you can easily spend 100k on the same kind of repair. So why so cheap? First of all, the shipyard was extremely fair to us. But also we did a lot to keep costs down. We spent the whole time aboard the ship and saved roughly 6000 euros for an apartment. We did everything we could do on our own at our own, including the cleanup of all the spot welds, which took longer than the welding itself. And also we arranged with the shipyard that we don't have any priority whatsoever. So they could work on other ships when it was busy and could work on our boat when there was not much else to do. Also a workboat shipyard is different from a boatyard. It is cheaper but you can't expect the same finish. But we are really satisfied with the result. Let's sum it up. Buying the boat was 68,000 euros. Running costs are about 10,000 euros a year. And even so we needed to make a huge repair and are in the middle of a very, very extensive refit, we only spent 20,000 euros extra in the shipyard. So as you see, refitting Flying Coney doesn't cost millions. Actually, I think the costs are quite reasonable. But for us, it's still a lot of money. Because we also had the terrible idea of making YouTube videos about it. And I say it straight away, including everything we get from our lovely Patreons and PayPal supporters, we make an average of 700 euros per month. Minimum wage here in Europe is about 2,000 euros per person. And that means we are losing 3,300 euros each and every month. We don't expect YouTube to pay for the whole refit project, but to get paid for the full-time job that is making and editing these videos would be nice. Anyway, we try to make the best videos we can as long as we can. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.